Um, so I'm, I'm Kathy. I am a, a former Rubyist turned Elixir addict. Um, and I also found out this morning that today is International Women's Day. So brief detour. Uh, so take a moment to honor the two most wonderful women in my life, my mom. Uh, her, her name is Denise. And if you ever meet her, you'll realize that she is the embodiment of sunshine. Um, so I, uh, I've spent my entire life trying to follow her model of kindness and bringing joy to every person I meet. So thanks, Mom, for that. And then, of course, my daughter, Lydia, uh, also the most generous, kind, giving, tiny woman I know. Uh, she picked out this picture this morning specifically because her baby brother was in it, and they just needed to be together. And so to Lydia, if you're watching this today or tomorrow or 10 years from now, I am so proud of you. And I hope that I can be a good model of bravery, curiosity, and kindness for you. And so for all of you who identify as a woman, happy day. <laughs> and for all of you who have wonderful women in your life, also wish them a happy day. So now, moving on to the code. <laughs> uh, today, I would like to share my learnings about live view, event sourcing, and how to prevent race conditions uh, when we have all these processes running at the same time. And this talk is actually aimed at beginners. So we'll go over some basics of event sourcing, uh, some use cases, some pros, some cons, and then actually why Elixir and Erlang are very, very useful uh, if you want to use event sourcing in your applications. And then further, why LiveView on top of all of this? And um, really, in general, at, at the very least, it's front end without JavaScript, which is great. <laughs> I, I wrote this app without a single line of JavaScript, and it just made me so happy. Um, so with, oh, and then also, after all of this, we're going to do a demo. It's going to be great, hopefully. <laughs> so at, at the very, very basic level, what is event sourcing? And it, in general, it's the Whenever something happens on the site, you log it. Uh, that could be a transaction, a, a user clicks a button, and then you want to track uh, engagement on a site or, or something like that. The, the most basic example that you will see in probably every blog post talk um, about event sourcing is your, uh, your balance for your bank account. Uh, your balance is not this mutable object within your accounts table. It is actually the sum of all the debits and credits that have been on your account. So all of the, the credit events, you say uh, you were given $5, and so now you have plus $5, and then you, you have another event that is minus $5, and now you see on your balance that it's three. Uh, the, 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 the actual balance didn't change, but all those transactions created it. Uh, let's see. So yeah, the event sourcing part of that is just all of those transactions, saving them to some kind of a data store. Uh, pros of this are auditing. It's pretty great. Um, if you want to find out exactly what happened, uh, what transactions happened to get your balance to this state, then you can call somebody up and you will see, oh, wow, that's where all my money went. Uh, if, you, if there are issues, uh, something like uh, debugging is, is pretty good, too. Let's say a user calls you up and say everything's broken. And you say, OK, well, can you run through the steps again and make this make the problem happen again? And they say, no, now it's working. Like, OK, <laughs> so what actually happened? What is the problem? I mean, I guess you could go and say, like, everything's working now. I don't care. But if you're a good developer, you might want to go back and actually see what broke your system or what state your system was in to get to that error, recreate it, and then hopefully write some tests, you know, tech debt depending. <laughs> um, and then an another pro, uh, obviously, is scalability. Uh, you can have a whole bunch of consumers taking in all of these events and writing, doing really qu quick write operations on the database without being bogged down by the more expensive read operations. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. From there, we have the cons. Couple not great things. Uh, eventual consistency uh, from May's talk. Uh, eventual consistency is inevitable, and it's actually fairly common. Uh, again, with the bank account example, I'm sure we're all used to something like this 
transaction will take, you know, wait a few minutes for this transaction to reflect on your account. So it's most of the time we're used to it, but sometimes we really need to know what the state is this second. And that could be useful for situations like booking, booking a hotel room, or you, know, you need to know if something is available this second, and if not, then I need to choose a different date. Um, so other things similar to like to an audit log, uh, data migrations. Uh, this can be, you, you can get around this if, if you think really deeply um, beforehand, before you architect your whole system. You can think of like, okay, what exact columns am I going to need in, the, in my audit log or in my event log? Uh, but inevitably, there you, we are all used to iterative development. There will be complications that come up at some point. So now you're going to have to deal with adding another column potentially to this audit log. And hopefully all that data is backwards compatible. And when you're doing that migration, what's going to happen during that downtime? And so it's very difficult situations there to kind of deal with. And uh, also, as May was saying yesterday, this whole system is, is pretty complex. The, the tooling around it, the, the learning curve with event handling, um, a lot of programming languages don't deal with this very well. However, that should sound a bit familiar because we have gen servers. <laughs> and they uh, have an entire framework for event handling that really kind of helps deal with the complexity, uh, that, the complexity portion of that. Uh, the, concern, the concurrency uh, portion of just having all of these lightweight processes on the beam. Uh, immutability uh, with event sourcing by nature is immutable. You aren't changing actual data. You are, it is just a log of things that happen. And uh, all of these, um, these paradigms that are part of Elixir and Erlang are uh, used for event sourcing. And, um, here I do say minimal complexity uh, <laughs> because frankly, I've, I've used gen servers at work in personal projects um, and even for this talk. And I'd say I'm still only about like 15 to 20% if I understand how they work. Um, there is a lot of documentation, thankfully, uh, about how to get a, a decent gen server up and running. So you can still use it and use this functionality. And I, I implore everyone to, this, Again, it's kind of a, it's a talk more towards beginners. So if you are feeling a little bit nervous, or if you see like the, the server module in in your company or in your uh, in your own personal app, don't be scared. It's okay. <laughs> you can check it out, uh, figure out what's going on, and at the very least, uh, the Elixir community is very helpful. Erlang as well, and always ask questions, check out the documentation. Um, there, it is. It is safe, you can do it. And if you know 5% today, then the next time you use it, maybe it's 7%. And hopefully more and more until, until maybe like 99, because we're never 100% sure of everything. And then for next steps, why live view? Because it is a gen server. <laughs> um, that's right. Each live view process uh, is its own process on a gen server. And so each user that opens up the browser, either like on their phone or uh, yeah, phone, desktop, laptop, whatever, that's its own little process. And it's doing its, living its best little process life. <laughs> and um, that means though that it can uh, send, um, send these events as they happen. It can broadcast those events to other little gen server processes and users, essentially. Um, so that kind of helps a little bit more with the, uh, the real-time aspect of it, that you can kind of go through your event sourcing. Um, like, you put the event in the, in the database and then um, send a broadcast at the same time. You can get kind of a, an idea of um, what is happening in real time. And so, with all those little basics out of the way, let's do a demo. Um, I invite you all, hopefully, here and uh, here and virtually, to please check this out. <laughs> hopefully this works.
<laughs> Hopefully, let's see. Um, let's see, maybe I can do both. Uh, okay, can you, okay. And then maybe it should look something. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, are we doing it live? Oh, no internal server error. Hold on, let me redeploy. Give me a second. It is? Oh gosh, okay, well I just triggered a redeploy. <laughs> so it might not work in a second, but let's see. I can like, doop a doop. Boop. <gasps> Yay! Okay. Oh no. Less, less okay. So, um, doop, doop, doop. All right, so there you go. Uh, if um, anything is happening in yellow, that means uh, somebody is trying to reserve this date. I don't know who, although actually, yep, lock started for normal rover. Um, and then here, let's see. Come on, work. Or did we break it? Oh, is it because I'm deploying again? Okay, well, let it be known this did work for a hot minute. <laughs> Um, so that is, that is the basic idea of, uh, again, kind of to the, the, the power, I guess, or how great LiveView is, is um, the, the whole like event part on the side. I wrote that this morning. <laughs> I thought that, oh, wait, maybe I should actually show what the, the events look like. And um, yeah, that's uh, no JavaScript, but all, all happening all in real time. And that's it. Sorry, super fast, but yeah, that's all I got for you. <laughs> oh. And actually, I do have some other considerations. Do, 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. Boop. Boop. Oh, hold up. Okay, well. Other considerations. <laughs> um, using uh, streams, you will eventually have a, a lot of um, large data at some point. Um, using Erlang's global trans to lock all of the processes at once. Um, so if one user is doing something and you don't want the other users to do other things, you can use global trans. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you could also use uh, various other libraries, uh, message brokers. Um, Broadway is awesome. RabbitMQ, Kafka, we know those. Um, also job processing with Oban. Um, so there are a bunch of tools out there, uh, a, lot of, a lot of use cases, and yeah. Any questions? <laughs> Amazing, thank you, Kathy. And oh. Oh. Yes. And congratulations on a working demo. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> um, yep. There's a question at the side there. Um, my question, just like really ignorant, so I'm sorry if that sounds a little bit stupid, but um, if we, if the process somehow dies and mm -hmm. then you're dealing with a transaction, mm -hmm. does the transaction fail on the database as well? That depends on how you program it. <laughs> um, it, it could, if you, you could put it within a transaction. Um, generally, it's pretty fast, so it should be okay. The, um, the rights, I guess, I could, I could show my code, oh my goodness. Um, the rights are pretty quick, so they should be uh, persisted for the most part. It, it, I guess if you do have a whole bunch at once, then you would have to um, work out some, some uh, persistence layer with, with uh, supervisors within the gen server. So. Like you didn't face any scenario where like the processes were crashing and then you were losing the ability to persist those events and then some at some point you lose track of oh where I where I am at the logging part and then you don't know from where you had to reprocess stuff again. I didn't run into that. Ah, okay, <laughs> <So> that's nice. <laughs> but um, I'm sure, there's an answer somewhere. On the course, thank you. <laughs> oh, and also everything is up on GitHub, this whole reservation app thing. Um, so it's Kirodante reservation app. Um, yeah, check it out. 
please tell me how I could fix it. Probably a whole bunch of ways, because again, I wrote part of this this morning. <laughs> so yeah, please help me refactor, and thank you again for your attention. <laughs>